The Krogan's clawed fist smashed into Corvus' face, azure blood spraying the academy floor as classmates watched in apathetic silence. No one stood up for the bully Devani girl, cowering from the hulking reptilians, until a lone human intervened. The year was 2157. At the prestigious Galactic Academy on planet Zephyrus, a sanctuary for the brightest minds of a thousand worlds, species still battled the same cruelties that plagued the cosmos for eons. Corvus, frail and brilliant, dreamed only of unraveling the universe's secrets. But to alpha predators like Erdnot Reeve, her kind were a cosmic punchline, weakling prey deserving only mockery and pain. As Reeve's gang tore feathers from Corvus's head, drawing yelps that fell on deaf ears, human classmate Brian Johnson felt something break inside. A fire ignited in his marrow, a blaze of righteous fury that drowned the chatter of a dozen alien tongues. He knew the stakes. Step into that circle and paint a target on humanity's back. Start a war his species couldn't finish. Doom his kind to another century of galactic ridicule. But Brian was his grandfather's son, and his grandfather's father's. On Blue Earth or Red Mars in the Oort Cloud or Andromeda, it made no difference. Human beings did not break before bullies or torturers. Even if it killed them. Even if it killed their entire species and every being they held dear. Fists clenched, jaw set. Brian stood and marched toward the circle of reptilian thugs, fully prepared to die on his feet, so a gentle soul could live. It was the human way. It had to be, out here in the pitiless void, or everything his ancestors fought for meant nothing at all. Brian helped Corvus to her feet as the Krogan gang skulked away. Purple bruises marred her blue skin, where cruel claws had torn feathers from her scalp. So you didn't have to do that, Corvus said, wincing as she touched her wounds. Now you'll be a target too. Brian shook his head. I couldn't just stand by and watch them hurt you. Us newcomers need to stick together, right? A ghost of a smile flickered across her face. I suppose we do. Thank you, Brian. Over the next weeks, an unlikely friendship blossomed between the human and Eleani. They met in quiet corners of the library, huddled over textbooks on quantum mechanics and stellar formation. Corvus shared the rich history of her people, their soaring symphonies and profound philosophies. Things that earned only scorn from races like the Krogan, who saw art and culture as weaknesses. They think we're soft, Corvus sighed one day as they sat in the academy gardens surrounded by alien flowers, that we don't belong here among the elites of the galaxy. Brian nodded. I know how you feel. A lot of folks don't think humans should be here either. We're too new, too unproven. They're just waiting for me to fail so they can say, I told you so. Corvus placed a gentle hand on his arm. But you won't fail. I've seen how hard you work, how much you care. You're going to do incredible things, Brian Johnson. I believe that. Heat rose in Brian's cheeks, but before he could stammer out a response, cruel laughter cut through the garden's peace. Well, well, look at the lovebirds, Reeves sneered, his gang snickering behind him. Guess the human found himself a nice piece of Eliani tail. Trying to get ahead in class, Johnson? Hoping she'll do your homework for you? Rage and humiliation burned in Brian's gut. He leapt to his feet, fists clenched. But Corvus grabbed his arm. Don't, she whispered. That's what he wants, to make you look like the aggressor. Reeve just laughed. Better watch yourself, human. Folks might start to wonder about you too, and you don't want anyone taking a closer look at your extracurriculars. With a final smirk, the Krogan sauntered away. After that, the whispers followed Brian and Corvus everywhere. Sideways glances, snide comments just loud enough to hear. Classmates who once partnered with them now avoided their eyes. Even a few professors seemed to look at them differently, critically. I'm sorry, Brian said in a low voice as they walked to Xenolinguistics. I never meant for you to get caught up in all this. It's not your fault, Corvus insisted. Reeve is a bully and a coward. He's just trying to... Well, if it isn't the galaxy's cutest couple, a deep voice boomed. Reeve and his lackeys blocked the hall ahead, malicious grins splitting their faces. Where are you off to, lovebirds? A nice little study session, or maybe... Get out of our way, Reeve, 
Brian growled. We're not looking for trouble. Oh, but you found it human, Reeves snarled, shoving a clawed finger into Brian's chest. The second you decided to cozy up to a feathered freak, you're a disgrace to this academy and your pathetic race. When will you get it through your thick skull? She doesn't want you. No one wants humanity here. Brian slapped his hand away. Corvus is my friend. That's not going to change no matter how many empty threats you make. Now back off before... Wham! Reeve's fist crashed into Brian's jaw, sending him crumpling to the floor. Stars exploded across his vision. Brian! Corvus screamed. She lunged toward him, but one of Reeve's cronies grabbed her arms, wrenching them behind her back. Reeve loomed over Brian's prone form, a vicious glint in his eyes. I warned you, human. You should have... Enough, a flanged voice rang out. Release them now! A squad of Turian students stood at the end of the hall, a tall figure in blue armour at their head. Garrus Vakarian, a legendary senior known for his strategic brilliance and unwavering moral compass. He levelled a steely glare at Reeve. The Krogan blinked, then signalled his gang. They shoved Corvus away, backing down the hall. This isn't over, human, Reeve spat. You and your girlfriend better watch your backs, cause next time your Turian babysitters won't be there to save you. As the Krogans fled, Garrus approached and offered a hand to Brian. You two all right? Brian nodded, accepting the help up. Yeah, thanks for the assist. Happy to help. Reeve's been cruising for a bruising. Seems like he finally picked the wrong fight. Garrus's mandibles flicked in a smirk. You've got guts, kid. Standing up to the Academy bully as a first year. Maybe humans are tougher than I thought. Brian held an ice pack to his throbbing jaw as Corvus fretted over him in the Academy infirmary. The confrontation with Reeve had left them both shaken, but Corvus's gentle touch soothed his aching face and troubled heart. I was so scared when he hit you, Corvus said, voice quavering. I thought... Brian grasped her hand. I'm okay, Cor. Reeve's just a bully. We can't let him win. Corvus squeezed back resolve hardening her features. You're right. He wants to divide us, make us afraid. We have to stay strong, together. The attack sent shockwaves through the academy. Fights were rare, and cross-species violence rarer still. Fearing rising tensions could tear the fragile piece apart, the administration took drastic action. The Galactic Unity Project, Dean Talori announced to the assembled student body, will build the bonds of fellowship among our diverse peoples, you will work in small teams to overcome great challenges. Only together will you succeed. To no one's surprise, Brian and Corvus found themselves assigned to the same group, along with a few familiar faces. Garrus Vakarian, the Turian who had come to their rescue, and Mordin Solus, a brilliant Salarian scientist. Their first task was a doozy, develop a viable terraforming plan for the hostile world of Zerith Minor. The planet's choking atmosphere, crushing gravity and deadly predators posed quite the puzzle. But as they pored over the problem, an amazing thing happened. Corvus approached it like an artist, sketching out creative solutions. Mordin rattled off a dozen scientific angles. Garrus saw the big picture, proposing how to deploy their limited resources. And Brian, with his human flexibility, found ways to combine their disparate ideas into a unified whole. Days of intense collaborative work birthed a truly innovative proposal. Morden's genetically engineered lichen would slowly enrich the atmosphere. Corvus designed soaring habitation towers to minimize exposure to Zereth's gravity. Garrus plotted out a phased settlement plan balancing safety and efficiency. Brian integrated it all and pitched it with passion. Their presentation wowed professors and students alike. Praise poured in from every corner of the academy, except one. Reeve glowered as the lords heaped up on Brian's team, each approving nod from a teacher, each congratulatory clap on the back from a peer, was a twist of the knife. This human needed to be put in his place, and Reeve would be the one to do it. Subtle at first, things started to go wrong. Simulation parameters mysteriously changed overnight. Key files vanished from team data drives. Whispers spread that the group's success was more luck than skill. 
Brian and his friends fought back, working twice as hard to overcome every setback. But Reeve escalated in turn. Culminating in the day, it all went to hell. The simulator sealed around them with a hiss. The mission, rescue civilians trapped in a disintegrating space station. Brian and his crew leapt into action, Garrus coordinating, Mordin calculating, Corvus improvising. They were a well-oiled machine, racing the clock to shuttle survivors to safety. Then the station's reactor exploded, except it wasn't supposed to. The whole level collapsed, bulkheads crumpling like tissue paper. Flames and debris filled the air as the team scrambled. Corvus screamed, pinned under a massive girder. Brian didn't hesitate. He charged into the inferno, ignoring the searing heat, the slashing shrapnel. He put his back into the scalding metal and lifted with all his might. Corvus crawled free, but a secondary explosion slammed Brian to the floor in a spray of blood. Somehow they made it out. The last survivors secure, Mordin overrode the sim with an emergency abort. They materialized in the staging room to a scene of chaos, medics rushing in, Garrus shouting for aid, Corvus sobbing over Brian's mangled body. It was bad, damn bad. Brian had saved them, saved the mission, and it might just cost him his life. He awoke in a haze of painkillers and confusion, a hospital room, sterile and white. Corvus slumped at his bedside, feathered head in her hands. Garrus and Mordin argued in hushed tones in the corner. Sabotage, Mordin was saying. Undeniable. Hack change simulation. Increased hazard level. But who would do such a thing, Garrus growled. Who would put lives at risk like that? Isn't it obvious, Corvus said, voice flat and cold as a vacuum. Reeve, he did this. He hurt Brian. The others fell silent as the horrible truth settled in, their friend, their leader, cut down by petty malice. The unfairness of it all crashed down on them. Corvus took Brian's hand, tears sparkling in her luminous eyes. You're going to be okay, she whispered. We need you. I, I need you. Brian squeezed weakly, a ghost of a smile on his pale lips. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, recovery, investigation, retribution, but with his team by his side, he could face anything, even a galaxy that seemed set against him. Because they were more than friends now, more than teammates, they were family. Forged in the crucible of shared adversity and tempered by loss and love. And no force in the universe, not Reeve, not ancient prejudices, not even death itself could break a bond like that. The steady beep of medical monitors filled Brian's ears as he blinked awake. His body ached, a map of bruises and bandages from the sabotage simulation. But his mind was clear, focused on one driving need, to get back to his team. You're one tough kid, a grizzled doctor said, checking his vitals. Most humans would still be in a coma after what you went through, but you're healing up nicely. Brian managed a weak grin. I had a good reason to wake up, Doc. As soon as he could walk, Brian made his way to the Academy Commons. Corvus, Garrus, and Mordin were huddled at a table, poring over data pads. They looked up as Brian approached, and Corvus let out a gasp. You're okay. She leapt up and wrapped him in a fierce hug, mindful of his injuries. Garrus clasped his shoulder, mandibles flared in a Turian smile. Knew you were too stubborn to let a little explosion keep you down, the soldier said. Mordin nodded, large eyes assessing. Healing progressing well, estimate 92% functionality, impressive resilience for human physiology. Brian chuckled, easing into a seat. I couldn't let you guys have all the fun without me. What's the latest? Their faces turned grim. The administration launched a full investigation into the sabotage, Garrus said. Turns out Reeve had help. A whole network of anti-human sympathizers stirring up trouble behind the scenes. But they slipped up this time, Corvus added, eyes hard. Left a trail of evidence a mile wide. Reeve and his inner circle are in custody, facing expulsion and criminal charges. Brian let out a slow breath. Good. I'm glad the Academy is taking it seriously. Reeves' hate and bigotry have no place here. Indeed, Mordin agreed. Academy is place of learning, cooperation. Reeves' actions antithetical to core values. Garrus leaned forward. There's more, the Galactic Unity Project. 
It's being declared a resounding success, and we're being held up as the shining example. Brian blinked. Us? But we nearly died in that last simulation. But we didn't, Corvus said, taking his hand. Because we worked together, we trusted each other. That's what the project was all about. In the following weeks, Brian and his team threw themselves back into their studies with renewed vigor. The shadow of Reeve's treachery no longer hung over them, and they flourished in the spirit of collaboration the Academy now fostered. As the term drew to a close, the entire student body gathered for a grand ceremony celebrating the Galactic Unity Project. Species of all kinds sat side by side, a tapestry of diversity united in purpose. This year has tested us, Jai, the headmaster said, voice ringing across the auditorium, challenged us to confront prejudices, both external and within ourselves. But through the Galactic Unity Project, we have proven that our strength lies in our differences, not despite them. Brian felt a swell of pride as his team was called to the stage. They stood tall, shoulder to shoulder, as the headmaster extolled their accomplishments. Garrus, the strategist, Mordin, the scientist, Corvus, the visionary, and Brian, the leader who bound them together. One by one, dignitaries from their respective species came forward to present them with commendations. The Turian Primarch, the Salarian Dalatras, the Eliani Matriarch, and for Brian, a grizzled Systems Alliance Admiral who shook his hand with a knowing gleam in his eye. You've made humanity proud, son, the Admiral murmured. But the greatest honour came from Corvus herself. She turned to face Brian, luminous eyes shining with emotion. Brian, she said, voice carrying across the hushed auditorium. When I came to this academy I was afraid, afraid that I would never find acceptance, that my people's ways would forever mark me as an outsider. She reached up and plucked a gleaming feather from her crest. But you showed me the truth. That strength comes from embracing our differences, not hiding from them. You stood by me, even when the whole galaxy seemed against us. Corvus pressed the feather into his hand, soft and warm. This is a symbol of my trust, my respect, and my love. You will always be a part of me, Brian Johnson, no matter where the stars may take us. Tears pricked Brian's eyes as he curled his fingers around the precious gift. I'll cherish it always, he whispered, and I'll cherish you, Corvus, my friend, my confidant, my sister in spirit. The auditorium erupted into applause, a thunderous swell of celebration and unity. Brian looked out over the sea of faces, human and alien alike, and felt a profound sense of belonging. They had started as strangers, thrown together by chance and political manoeuvring. But now, forged in the crucible of hardship and tempered by understanding, they stood as something more, a living embodiment of the ideals the Academy espoused. As the ceremony concluded, and the student body began to disperse, Brian found himself lingering, savouring these final moments. The future stretched out before them, unknown and exhilarating. He would enter the system's alliance as he always dreamed, while Corvus returned to uplift her people with her newfound wisdom. Their paths might diverge, but the bond they forged would endure. The lessons they learned, the laughs they shared, the battles they fought, both external and within, these would stay with them, guiding lights in the vast, uncertain galaxy. And so, with a final embrace and a promise to always stay true, Brian and Corvus parted ways, not with sorrow, but with joy, secure in the knowledge that though the stars may separate them, their spirits would forever be entwined. Brian looked down at the feather in his hand, marvelling at its delicate strength, a reminder of the friend who changed his life, and the man he had become. With a smile, he tucked it carefully into his pocket, close to his heart. A symbol of his time at the Galactic Academy, a symbol of the future they would build together, no matter the distance, a future of acceptance, of unity, of hope. The future they would forge, one friendship at a time in the cold light of distant stars. The feather was faded and worn, the once vibrant colours muted by time and the struggles it had witnessed. Yet as Brian clutched it in his hand, memories of his days at the Galactic Academy rushed back, as vivid as if they had happened yesterday.
The laughter shared with Corvus in the gardens, the long night spent poring over quantum mechanics, the unwavering support they had shown each other in the face of cruelty and adversity. He never imagined he would see her again like this, chained and bruised in the depths of a Batarian slaver den. In the years since the Academy, Corvus had become a fierce advocate for her people. She had spoken out against the injustices faced by the Eleani and other marginalized species, her voice a clarion call for change. But her activism had come with a price. The Batarian slavers, seeking to make an example of her, had abducted Corvus and dozens of other prisoners. Now, as a decorated Systems Alliance Marine, it fell to Brian to lead the rescue mission. His squad moved silently through the Warlord's stronghold, dispatching guards with ruthless efficiency. But as they breached the holding cells, Brian's heart stopped. There, among the huddled captives, was a face he would know anywhere. Corvus, he breathed, rushing to her side. With trembling hands, he removed her shackles, his eyes never leaving her face. I'm here. I've got you. Corvus looked up at him, her luminous eyes filled with a mixture of disbelief and hope. Brian, is it really you? He nodded, a lump forming in his throat. I made a promise, remember? To always stand by your side, I intend to keep it. As they made their way out of the cells, the alarms began to blare. Batarian guards swarmed from every direction, their weapons trained on the escaping prisoners. Brian and his squad formed a protective circle, their guns blazing as they cut a path through the enemy forces. But in the chaos of battle, Brian felt a sudden searing pain in his chest. He looked down to see a dark stain spreading across his armor, a Batarian sniper's round having found its mark. He stumbled, his vision blurring at the edges. Brian! Corvus cried, catching him as he fell. She supported his weight, half dragging, half carrying him towards the extraction point. His blood stained her feathers as she tried to keep him conscious, her voice a desperate plea. Stay with me, Brian, please, just hold on. They burst out into the open air, the roar of the shuttle's engines filling the sky. Brian's squad provided covering fire as Corvus helped him aboard, laying him gently on the floor. She cradled his head in her lap, tears streaming down her face. You're going to be okay, she whispered, even as the light in his eyes began to fade. We'll get you help. Just stay with me. But Brian knew his time was short. With a trembling hand, he reached into his pocket and withdrew the Eliani feather, now worn and faded with age. He pressed it into Corvus's hand, a small smile playing on his lips. I've carried this with me every day since you gave it to me, he rasped his breath coming in short, painful gasps, a reminder of our friendship, of the bond we forged. Corvus clutched the feather to her heart, her body shaking with sobs. Brian, please don't leave me. He reached up, brushing a tear from her cheek with a blood-stained thumb. I'll always be with you, Corvus, in here. With his last ounce of strength, Brian tapped a finger against her chest just above her heart. Then, with a final sigh, he closed his eyes and was still. Corvus let out a wail of anguish, burying her face in Brian's neck. She rocked back and forth, whispering a prayer in her native tongue for his soul. The shuttle carried them away from the stronghold, the smoke of battle fading in the distance. In the aftermath of the mission, Corvus returned to her people, carrying with her the story of Brian's sacrifice. She spoke of his courage, his compassion, his unwavering commitment to justice. Her words struck a chord with the galactic community, reigniting the ideals of the Galactic Unity Project. A statue was erected at the Galactic Academy, depicting Brian and Corvus as they were during their days as students. They stood side by side, united in their friendship and their shared vision of a better future. It served as a reminder to all who passed by of the power of empathy, the strength of the human spirit. And though Brian was gone, his legacy lived on. Through Corvus, through the countless lives he had touched, a testament to the unbreakable bonds of friendship and the enduring light of hope in a galaxy too often shrouded in darkness. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.